Hello, Williamson County. I'm Carrie Hudson, and welcome to It's About You, an informational program about the classes, activities, and special events of the Williamson County Parks and Recreation Department. As we move into the holiday season, Williamson County Parks and Recreation has several community events and programs planned to help you commemorate and celebrate this special time of year, as well as spend time together as a family and prepare for the upcoming holidays. Joining me for today's show to talk about these events is our programming administrator, Laurie Kamunin. Laurie, it's so nice to have you back in the studio. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you. It's been a while. Now that I have staff that are regulars, I don't get over here as much, but it's good to be here. I, I remember when you used to be like our standard guest. <laughs> you were here almost every time to talk about so many That's things. Right. And you're right. Over the years, you've delegated those responsibilities to other uh, members on your team. That's and while right. we love having more people from the department come in to the show and tell us about all the wonderful many things that the Williamson County Parks and Recreation departments doing in our community it's still nice to have you with us thank you so much it's good to be back wonderful well I love this time of the year I love all the events that we have coming up over the next couple of weeks because I think they take one of the simplest purest joys in life um, and just kind of commemorate it for what it is absolutely the holiday season is always a very magical time of year and I love when we get ready to do these annual holiday events right and I hope that they uh, through the years have become traditions for people and their children uh, it's nice to see when we have people come back and and say oh I've been coming to this event for so many years and uh, so it's very nice that it's becoming tradition holiday tradition here in Williamson County for many people well, let's talk about a couple of the different things that you have coming up on the calendar. Okay. December is going to be a very busy month for you guys. You've got tons of different kinds of events going on. Uh, we talked a little bit last week about the Star Bright Players Children's Theater production. Mm -hmm. That's the first weekend in December. It's yes. Four wonderful productions of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang that are coming up in just a few short weeks. Can't believe time is here for that I already. Know. Um, and then we have our traditional Santa events that are coming yes. up the second weekend in December. You've got two separate events this year that are going to be in Franklin and Fairview. Yes. Uh, we'll start out with our Fairview event first. It's okay. going to take place on Friday night, December the 9th, um, and it's a story time with Santa event. That's right. We uh, had gotten some information that there were some other events in the area and people recommended we try some different things so last year we actually pulled story time with Santa um, and replaced it with a family event and we got bombarded with bring story time with Santa back to Fairview um, so it's a very well received uh, thing even though we had some people that were wanting something different the majority of the people have spoken and uh, Santa is returning to Fairview for story time um, and it's a, a really fun event. Kids can come in their PJs. Um, they'll have cookies and milk. Santa will read a couple stories and then each child has the opportunity to crawl up into Santa's lap and give, them, give him their wish list for the season, um, get pictures taken with them and really enjoy some individual time uh, with Santa during the holiday rush. I love how sometimes it's the simplest things that can be the most fun um, because there's 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 not a lot of bells and whistles to this one you no, know it's it's no. in, I mean it's nothing like what the department does when they're putting together touch a truck and spooks and coops and some of those larger events that we've handled right. recently um, but like you said this is a time loved event and when we did try to make a change people said no no we don't want to change that <laughs> right we love story time with Santa exactly no, bring that back well and I think this events a little more intimate it's not so much on the grand scale like you said um, it's you know a, a good smaller group of people um, reservations are required um, but like I said it's more laid back kind of relaxed the kids get to enjoy just uh, running around and and then sitting down and enjoying a story and um, participating in some refreshments but like I said it's it's that one-on-one -on -one time Santa really takes his time with each child doesn't make anybody feel rushed um, isn't trying to get through the group as quickly as he can um, and so I think it's that intimacy and that 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 time that each child has with Santa that I think just makes it really special. Mm -hmm. And it is an evening event. It's from 7 to 8.30 p.m. So like you said earlier, you know, bring the kids in their pajamas. That's right. There are so many opportunities throughout the holiday season now when people get to interact with Santa and, and other um, characters associated with the holidays. And this is a little bit of a different opportunity. 
Like there's lots of opportunities where you can go and see Santa in the day and wear your Christmas dress and you know dress right. up and all that kind of stuff. But this is one of the few evening-based events where you get That's to spend right. time with and Santa. There's, there's so many cute Christmas PJs. So why be all fancy dress, dressed up when you can come out in, in your Christmas PJs and, and kind of kick back with Santa? Yeah. So definitely a fun night for everyone involved. Like Laurie said, advanced registration is required for this event. Um, and there is a small cost of $6 per child for this program. Mm -hmm. Adults are required to attend with their children, but the adults are free. Yes. So I, know, I think we're one of the only few people in town who ever say, just, yeah, no, just pay for the kids. Adults, come on. <laughs> we're not going to charge you anything. That's right. We just want mom and dad to attend. To attend. Mom and dad, be sure to bring your cameras as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Um, because like you said, this is one of those unique opportunities where kids actually get to spend a little bit of time with Santa. It's not just the sit on his lap, take the picture next. Right. They actually get to have conversation and yeah. actually yeah. get to spend some one-on-one -on -one time. So it really lends itself to a wonderful photo opportunity. And my favorite is when kids bring in their lists and they have, you know, catalogs cut out with all the pictures and, and he goes through all of those with them and really, you know, pays attention to what they're showing him. And um, I love when he puts all of the lists in his bag before he leaves to make sure he's got everybody's information and what everybody wants for the holidays. It's very, very fun. Um, and like they always do, our staff goes above and beyond in decorating a wonderful scene um, and really setting the stage for this event, um, which makes it, again, another ideal photo opportunity. There's a great backdrop to be had. Absolutely. Uh, I think they'll be having uh, the gingerbread and some of the um, Candyland backdrops that'll be out there this year um, with Santa. So people have opportunity to take all kinds of pictures. It'll be a wonderful event. Again, remember space is limited for this event and advanced registration is already going on. You can register online through our website at wcparksandrec.com using the registration code 7990. The following day, on Saturday, December the 10th, you have our Franklin-based Santa event. Yes. Um, so the first two weekends in December, you're really knocking it out. We are. We're busy. I love when people say after summer camp, what are you all going to do now that camp's over? And it's like, huh, let me tell you all the things we're going to do. Um, but we definitely gear up for the holidays. Um, lots going on. And our Breakfast with Santa event is, uh, has been going on for 25-plus years. Um, it's very well attended. It's much larger than the event in uh, the Fairview facility. Um, and we have lots and lots of kids come out. But what's really fun is not only are, do we have Santa coming, you would expect to have elves or reindeer or something. Right? No, we're bringing the minions with Santa. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun chaos. Um, and kids will get to do a lot of different activities that involve Santa and the minions. Um, what I love about this event is that it, it still has that traditional component to it of, you know, that that one-on-one -on -one time with Santa, breakfast yes. with Santa, getting to sit in his lap, and just like with our other events, share your holiday wish list and, you know, have this great conversation and wonderful opportunity to spend mm -hmm. time with Santa. But you build so many other activities into the morning. It's really a very action-packed morning. Um, this is an early event. It's from 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. It's not a full two and a half hour event. People can right. come and go during that time frame. It's really just up to you and how your family kind of sets their schedule on a right. Saturday. Um, it's been nice over the, the last couple years. We've kind of rearranged how we do this event instead of everybody having to be there right at 8 o'clock. Um, we've gotten so people kind of come anytime that they want in between. Like you said, there's lots of other activities to do other then see Santa. So if there is a line for Santa, the kids can go get their minion tattoos. They can do their minion construction hats. There's a coloring station. Um, of course, there's uh, lots of breakfast items um, for the kids and mom and dad and grandparents to partake in. Um, so there's a lot of different activities um, and you're not just having to wait in one big long line, you know, trying to get everybody in there between 8 and 1030. So people kind of come at their leisure. We've had some that come in, you know, 9, even 10 o'clock that they don't want to deal with the earlier crowd and they come in and, and have that time on the back end with Santa. So however people want to, you know, use their time mm -hmm. is, is at their leisure. Um, they just need to make sure they have their reservations ahead of time. Exactly. Um, and there's so many other wonderful things with this event. I love um, what you guys do to really create an atmosphere for this event. 
Breakfast with Santa is quite a bit larger as far as the number of people that you accommodate with this program than Storytime with Santa. Yes. It's actually held in the gymnasium on one full basketball court at the Franklin Rec Center. But you all do a wonderful job in really transforming a basketball court <laughs> into a special event space. Yes, uh, we decided it's one of those go big or go home events um, and the meeting room just was no longer big enough to hold this event. Um, so we did put it in the gym knowing that in the past for our father-daughter dances and other things we've been able to really transform a gym into something kind of magical. And what's neat is the day that we're setting up, people are in on the walking track and, and they always stop and go, I can't believe how different it looks in here and how much fun and all the color and festivity. Um, so there is a lot to transforming the gym into kind of a winter wonderland full of fun um, for the kids and their parents to enjoy. And I love seeing how involved your staff gets with this event. Cindy Moore takes this one very personally. She yes, loves she this event. She puts her heart into it every year. Yes, she does. She will be retiring in February, so this will be her last big hurrah. So she is definitely putting her heart and soul into it. She's worked very hard. Um, she's gotten some incredible breakfast items um, either donated um, or reduced so that we can have a, a really delicious breakfast with all kinds of different items. Um, she worked hard getting Santa reserved early and uh, like I said she she goes all out on different activity stations and everything so she's done a wonderful job planning and she's had a great support staff through our programming division um, and like you said this this is one of those events that everybody has fun coming to everybody wants to dress up either as an elf or a minion or you know just be part of the festivity for the morning um, and they love seeing 125 kids plus their parents and grandparents come in and just enjoy the morning and be completely mesmerized by the magic of it all. Mm -hmm. Because it is held in a slightly larger space, you're also able to spread things out a little bit more with yes. this event. And over the past couple years, it's been nice to see how you create almost little vignettes throughout different parts of the gymnasium. Yes. I really appreciate this because I do not have a photogenic <laughs> child. Um, well, I mean, not, not yeah. that she's not photogenic, she doesn't like having her picture made. And so prior to going to see Santa, we kind of warm her up a little bit <laughs> on what if we just take your picture over here by the gingerbread men? What if we take your picture over here by the Candyland scene? What if we take your picture over here? Here, get the picture with Santa. Um, and just kind of <laughs> throw it in to, there. Yeah, yes. Throw it in there. Yeah. Now, it, 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 like I said, there's lots of opportunities for you to take pictures around the gym. Um, there's all kinds of different stations and, and things like that. So if you have kids that are a little, it takes them a little bit longer to warm up to Santa. Um, they have the opportunity. The good thing is Santa is in clear view, so other kids can kind of sit and watch how the other kids interact mm -hmm. with them. Um, I was always one of those that had kids that were very hesitant about seeing um, Santa, not as much as the Easter Bunny, but um, you know they, they were still a little hesitant. Um, but this Santa event, my children, my son will be 15 this Christmas, and uh, he's been to see this Santa every year. And, and the fact that you know now it's a, a 10 and younger kind of activity, he's, he's kind of bummed that he doesn't get his time. Oh, man. Yeah, he's, uh, he's one of those teenagers that's enthusiastic about uh, his mm -hmm. picture with Santa. So you know, it's nice to see that kids who have grown up with it, you know, when, it's, when it, they've aged out, they're going to kind of miss it a little bit. Yeah, it's still something that, that, that they would want to do if they yeah. could. Yeah, it's tradition. Well, Breakfast with Santa is coming up at the Franklin Recreation Complex. Again, that's Saturday, December the 10th. It's from 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Cost for this program is $10 per child and is limited to children ages 10 and younger. Parents are also, again, admitted for free to this event. Um, advanced registration is also required for this program as well and is currently going on through our website again at wcparksandrec.com you can register with the code 7985 um, and we also want to thank some wonderful community sponsors who've helped us with this event uh, we have some great returning sponsors and harpeth true value mcdonald's chick-fil-a publix and dunkin donuts this year yes uh, Dunkin Donuts is a new sponsor this year and they are very enthusiastic about jumping on board and helping out so we appreciate their their participation as a new sponsor with our department. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well we do need to take a quick break. Y'all stay tuned though when we come back we'll spend more time talking about other upcoming holiday activities with the Williamson County Parks and Recreation Department. <laughs>
Welcome back to It's About You. And today we're talking about holiday programs offered by the Williamson County Parks and Recreation Department. For the first half of our show, we talked about some of our actual events. Story time with Santa at the Fairview Recreation Complex on Friday, December the 9th, and breakfast with Santa at the Franklin Recreation Complex on Saturday, December the 10th. Another holiday tradition and staple, really, for Williamson County Parks and Recreation around the holiday season are our Santa's mailboxes, though. Yes. Um, something that the department has done for years um, in collecting letters to send to Santa. Um, but it's really been, again, one of the things I think I've enjoyed the most collecting those letters and forwarding them onto Santa and just seeing how happy it can make kids to deliver their letters and getting their response back is pretty important too. Absolutely. Uh, we have mailboxes set up at a variety of our uh, recreation facilities where kids can drop off their letter. Um, we always make a big reminder that they put their return address if they want a letter back from Santa. Um, it's important that he knows, you know, we know that he knows who goes where, but we want to make sure um, that we have those addresses so that the letters can get there before Christmas because um, obviously he's very busy this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important um, that kids put that information and then, you know, they, it, it's really sweet, uh, you know, the, the letters usually in, include if they've been good or bad. Um, we've had letters that have um, included requests for mom and dad um, that it's neat to see that the kids aren't just thinking of themselves and that mm -hmm. type of thing that it's uh, and we've had uh, letters from parents as well um, asking Santa to help with adoption situations and things that are going on um, so it's been um, a privilege to work with Santa to bring these letters in and make sure that he gets everything so he has time to respond to every child or parent that sends in a letter. My favorites are the ones where they tattle on their brothers and yeah. sisters. I'm like, you're just airing it all out, aren't you? That's Make sure Santa right. knows what's going on. That's right. And you know, that, that elf in the shelf was probably helping at home too, that they're, they're tattling <laughs> on what's really going on in the house as well. Um, but it's, it is, it's great to um, have the letters come in and um, it, it, like you said, when you're outside and just happen to see a car pull up to let the kids out to put their letters in, they're so excited. There's always, you know, some squeals of delight. Um, can't wait to hear what Santa has to say back to them. Um, and then we also have had many teachers that, you know, they use it as a writing lesson in school that they let the kids write a letter. And so we may have somebody that drops off 25 or 30 letters at a time, you know, mm -hmm. for Santa. So we're good taking letters from groups or individuals. Either works. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I love the most about doing this with my own daughter is how it gets her to focus. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, the first year we did our, our, our little letter to Santa, like she just kind of told me some things and I, I wrote the letter to Santa. Sure. She put, and she put, I think, maybe her own stickers on it. You know, and then the next year we went through a catalog and she cut out the things right. that she wanted and she pasted them to the letter and you know, she kind of told me what she wanted the letter to say. But you know, over the years she's getting more and more involved and it's a lot easier to get her to cut and paste or write <laughs> or draw, write her own name, anything like that if it's for Santa. That's right. And I think, you know, it, it totally takes out the confusion. You know, there's so many different varieties of certain toys or games. So if you've got that picture pasted in there, then Santa knows exactly, exactly. what you want. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Verbatim. What page number and everything. That's it's just, right. It's all there. Um, and then just seeing how much ownership the kids take in this and how proud they are um, when they come to deliver their own letters. Well, and I also think it's a great tool to remind your kids, hey, you're going to be writing your letter soon, so you might want to be sure you're watching your behavior. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get those things you really do want. That's right. Well, we have several different locations where our Santa mailboxes will be available to the public, including the Franklin Recreation Complex, the Fairview Recreation Complex, the Hillsboro Leapers Fort Community Center, the Fairview Recreation Center, and the Williamson County Recreation Complex at Nolansville. Our Santa mailboxes will be set up December 1st through the 16th, and these are real mailboxes. Yes. They will actually be set up outside the facilities um, on actual posts. So I know sometimes yeah. when people come into the building, you know, looking for the location, they're actually going to be real mailboxes. Yes, they are. So it's hard. It's not hard to find. Um, they are decorated for the holidays, um, and they're, it's pretty well spelled out on the side that it is Santa's mailbox. 
um, so it should not confuse anybody. Um, but like we said, it's, it should be something that the kids look forward to being able to visit the facilities and drop those letters off. And we do have the deadline of the 16th to make sure that Santa has plenty of time to get letters back before he's packing up and getting ready to head out for his big night. Exactly. Lots of great opportunities this holiday season. Um, again, just reiterating some of our events, story time with Santa on Friday night, December the 9th from 7 to 8.30 at the Fairview Rec Center. And breakfast with Santa, sorry. <laughs> Um, the next day on Saturday, December the 10th from 8 to 10.30 a.m. at the Franklin Recreation Complex. You know, one of the things that we failed to mention with especially the breakfast event, you know, parents are included in all of these events, and we want as many family members to come as possible. These are really magical times to share with the entire family. Absolutely. But especially for that breakfast with Santa <laughs> event, 8 o'clock is early for anybody, regardless of what day of the week it is. So we do want to let people know that Breakfast with Santa, there's plenty for everyone, and there's that special elixir of life that <laughs> we provide. <laughs> yes. Coffee. That's, That's right, right, parents. Coffee at Breakfast with Santa. Yes. We know it's early. We know your kids want to come, and they're probably getting up at 6.30 in the morning saying, let's go see Santa. So there's plenty yeah. of coffee yes. for you that um, the, the fee is applied towards the kids' admission. Like you said, parents are free, but we do have plenty of food. And in addition to juice and milk, we do have lots of coffee for the parents. So uh, that is, is free of charge to them. So we didn't want them to feel like they might be left out. Um, you know, come with hungry bellies. We've got plenty for everyone. Absolutely. Um, in, in getting ready to kind of wrap up today, we talked briefly in our last show about Star Bright Players mm -hmm. and we mentioned the performance um, of this winter's musical Chitty Chitty Bang Bang on the first weekend of December this year. But since Star Bright's always been one of those programs that's been exceptionally close to your heart, tell us a little bit about this year's group and the performance that they're getting ready to, to present. Well, we're very excited. We had um, quite a few new participants to the program. Um, it's always exciting to have auditions and you know that you have a good return group of kids that are well vested in theatrical talent. Um, but this community is blessed with talented children and so each audition it's great to bring in new families and see the talent that some new kids are bringing to the table. Um, and we have a great new group. Uh, we, we unfortunately had a big graduation class in our spring show, mm -hmm. lost a lot of um, regulars who had been with us for many years. Um, and so it's neat to see some of these new families coming up. And Chitty Chitty Bang Bang has not been done in this area. Um, so we're really excited to have a fresh show that a lot of people haven't seen um, other than on the big screen. And they are um, frantically making um, the old car plus the new Chitty Chitty Bang Bang flying car. Um, and parents are working hard helping decorate the set. And it's really just coming together beautifully. So we're very excited and can't wait to see this performance take off. It, it's really a true joy to be able to see these things come together. There's so much work and time that goes into these Star Bright players' performances mm -hmm. from our staff um, as well as from the kids themselves and their families. And it's mm -hmm. lovely seeing that community engage and pull these off every year. It is, and, and I think my favorite thing is when new people come to the shows, and, and we've had plenty of um, audience members who are not related to anybody in the show. They're just in the community and have come by and gotten tickets. Um, and I love hearing, well, I don't always have to drive to Nashville. This is a really good performance. These kids are incredibly talented. Or my favorite is, I forgot I was watching kids. You mm -hmm. know, that the, the talent level among singers, dancers, actors is just uh, the best of the best. And we're, we've been very blessed with Starbright players. Um, and one of my favorite things is, you know, we cast the multitudes. Um, so there are a lot of other places that um, have limited cast numbers. Um, we've had as few as 45 in a cast. We've had as many as 133, which when you have a, a performance venue that only seats 198, when you have 133 on stage, it's kind of crazy. 
Um, but we really want it to be an opportunity where as many kids can take to performing arts as possible. Mm -hmm. oh, and I think it's done that exceptionally well. Yeah, we're very proud of the program. Yeah. Well, as we wind down today, we do just want to remind you about some of our upcoming events mm -hmm. and dates. Remember, our Santa mailboxes will be placed out December the 1st, and children can drop off their letters to Santa through December the 9th, or excuse Six. me, through the 16th mm -hmm. um, at five separate Williams County Parks and Recreation locations. Um, details are available through our website wcparksandrec.com. We also have our two main events on Friday, December the 9th at the Fairview Recreation Complex with our Story Time with Santa event. Um, and then the following day, Saturday, December the 10th, Breakfast with Santa at the Franklin Recreation Complex. Again, remember registration for both of those events is going on now through our website. Um, in closing, we do want to mention a couple of other additional activities that we have coming up over the holidays. Um, first is our after Thanksgiving hike. <laughs> if you eat too much over Thanksgiving, maybe you need a breath of fresh air or you just don't want to fool with the holiday shopping crowd. <laughs> Join us at Timberland Park located off the historic Natchez Trace Parkway for an after Thanksgiving hike on Friday, November the 25th starting at 10 a.m. The hike will be around a mile long and will last between an hour to an hour and a half. Along the way, we'll discuss plants, animals, and some of the history of the area. The hike is free and open to the public. Walk-ins are welcome, but advanced registration is appreciated so that we can properly determine our staffing. To register, log on to our website at wcparksandrec.com. While you're there, you can also get more information about the Star Bright Players Winter Musical Performance of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang that will be coming up the first weekend in December, Thursday, December 4th through, or excuse me, Thursday, December 1st through Sunday, December 4th at Freedom Middle School Theater located off of Highway 96 West in Franklin. Tickets are currently available and on sale for $8 a piece at the front desk of the Franklin Recreation Complex. Children ages 3 and younger are admitted for free if sitting on a parent's lap. And again, that is just because seating is so limited yes. in that auditorium space. I will say, if you've never attended one of our children's theater shows before, please join us for one of these events and you will not be disappointed. In the spirit of the holidays, non-perishable food items will be collected at each performance, benefiting one Genoway, this year's annual department food drive recipient. And speaking of our annual holiday food drive, Williamson County Parks and Recreation is happy to host this food drive ag event again this year, benefiting our Williamson County neighbors in need. Collection carts are located at our main facilities in Brentwood, Fairview, Franklin, Nolensville, and Spring Hill, as well as our satellite centers in Bethesda, College Grove, and Hillsboro Weavers Fork, plus our indoor soccer arenas in Brentwood and in Franklin. The food drive is going on now through December the 10th. And lastly, over the next couple of weeks during the holiday season, there will be some facility closures and modified hours. Uh, the first to let you know about is Thanksgiving. In observance of Thanksgiving, Williamson County Parks and Recreation facilities will be closed on Thursday, November the 24th. Friday, November 25th, our main recreation facilities will be open from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Timberland Park will be open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. All other facilities will reopen according to their regular schedules beginning Saturday, November the 26th. I want to thank you guys for joining us for today's show. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember Williamson County, it's all about you.